Next we're going to look at a new type of function that we're introducing to simulate something that happens quite a bit in engineering. It's the unit step function, or it's also known as the heavy side function. We're going to use h of t to represent this function, and it is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 for t greater than 0. So the Heaviside function represents the idealization of flipping a switch. If the switch is supposed to come on at some time other than zero, we can just shift the argument of the step function. In other words, we can use h of t minus capital T, and then that's a function which is zero for t less than capital T and one for t greater than capital T. Now the key thing to know about these step functions is that if we put them in as the forcing function of an ODE, linear ODE, where everything else about that ODE is continuous, then the solution of this problem will also be continuous. That allows us to have a pretty straightforward method for finding the solution. We just do things piecewise. So for the first piece between 0 and capital T, the forcing function is absent, or it equals 0. So we have this homogeneous initial value problem that we know how to solve. And then when the switch is turned on, then we solve with the forcing function that's now on. And the initial condition is now at capital T, and it comes from the first piece. So here's an example where the forcing function in this equation is turned on. It's 5 between time 3 and time 6, and 0 everywhere else. So there are actually three pieces that we need to solve for. There's the piece from 0 to 3, and then the part from 3 to 6, and then the solution from 6 to infinity. So we pick those up in order. In the first part, the forcing function is 0 between time 0 and 3. So we just solve the homogeneous problem, x prime equals x. With the given initial value. This is a routine problem for us by now. We know the solution is an exponential. And since the initial condition is given at 0, then the solution is just negative 2 times e to the t. Now for the next piece, the forcing function equals 5 over the interval from 3 to 6. So now we have this non-homogeneous problem to solve. And the initial value, right, t 3 is considered the initial time for this piece, that comes from x over the previous piece evaluated at t equals 3. This is a non-homogeneous problem, so we have to have the homogeneous part plus a particular part. To solve this particular part, it's very easy to use the method of undetermined coefficients. Since the forcing function here is just a constant, which is a polynomial of degree 0, then xp should also be a polynomial of degree 0. So we just have to find out what this coefficient b is and we plug this xp into the original equation on this piece. So x prime is 0, xp itself is b, and this has to equal 5. Obviously then b equals negative 5. That tells us that the solution over this piece is a constant times e to the t plus negative 5. 
I still haven't used the initial condition on this piece. So putting in t equal to 3, we know that on the one hand this has to equal negative 2 e cubed. That came from the first piece, remember? And on the other hand, it has to equal the expression that we just found for the second piece. And now we can solve this thing for the unknown c1. So that gives us the entire solution for the second piece of the time interval. Then we finally have to solve starting at time t equals to 6. Now over this time interval, the forcing function is again 0. So we again have a homogeneous problem, and now the solution is given at time 6 from the previous segment that we just found with t equal to 6. So I'll rewrite that to make it slightly more convenient. Now the solution to this problem, it's homogeneous, so it's just a constant times e to the t. So we, all we have to do is use the initial value, which in this case is at time t equal to 6. And that helps us solve for this constant c2. So that helps us finalize the solution over this last piece. The entire solution to the problem is to find piecewise, we have one formula for the time 0 to 3. Over time 3 to the 6, we have a different formula. And for times greater than 6, we have a third formula. I want to redo that last example with the step forcing numerically. The only thing I'm going to do is change the problem slightly. Um, in order to make a nicer picture, really, I'm just changing the coefficient that used to be 1 here. I'm just making it 1 tenth instead. So the first piece of the solution goes from time 0 to time 3. I have to define the differential equation for the numerical solution. So remember, I define a differential equation by creating a function that says what dx dt must be. So dx dt as a function of t and x is 0 0.1 times x. I'm going to solve this at 200 points in the interval from time 0 to time 3. And then in my solver, I have to give it the f, the time, and the initial value. So I'll do that and plot the solution. Now that the solution's done, this ta is now a vector of 200 times from 0 to 3. And xa is a vector of 200 solution values at those same times. All right, in the second piece, now the forcing term is turned on. So I have this plus 5 here. So that reflects, or that has to be reflected in this definition for the differential equation here. I want to solve this piece at time, times between 3 and 6. 
And then specifying the initial value for this segment is a little bit tricky because mathematically what I want is the value of the solution xa at the time t equals 3. And if we were writing that on paper, we would write xa parentheses 3. But in this program, that would be the third element of a vector v or of a vector xa. That's not what I want because that would be some early time close to zero. Instead, what I want is the value of the solution that corresponds to t equals 3, which is at the very end of the vector. Right? That was the very last thing we asked for in the first part. So here is the syntax for getting the last element of that solution vector from the previous segment. And when I look at the solution, it's continuous as it's supposed to be. But you notice x prime is definitely not continuous. The slope has a discontinuity, which actually makes sense because the original differential equation tells you that x prime is equal to something which is continuous, that's x, plus a jump from 0 to 5 and back again. So since x prime was defined to have a jump in it, it's not surprising that the slope jumps. In fact, it should be jumping by 5. Finally, in the last segment, I'm back to the homogeneous equation, so I define that again. And it, could, it starts at time 6, it could go on forever, but I have to tell MATLAB where to stop, so I'll stop it at time 10. And now the initial condition comes from the second segment of the solution, but again it's the last value in that segment, which is at time 6. And there I have the complete solution. Let's look once more at that example we had. I want to rewrite this forcing term using the step function notation. And we can do that with this part in parentheses, which is called a windowing function. So if we look at what happens up until time 3, it's equal to 0. And then the first one of these turns on at time 3, so it becomes 1. And then when we reach time 6, the second one kicks on, and that takes the thing back down to 0. So this function is only 1 between time 3 and 6. We may call that a window function. We can also write the solution we found using these window functions. So the first piece is valid in the window from time 0 to 3. And of course, since all the times are greater than 0 anyway, we might as well just write 1 here for the heavy side, h of t. And then the second function definition is valid over the second window from time 3 to 6. And the last function definition is valid over all times greater than 6. You can think of that as a window, but it's really just the switch, right? It's just turning on at time 6 and it never turns off.